beautiful boys and girls, and welcome to Storytime with Avant Garde Books. I hope you are well. Today, I'm going to be reading Unspeakable, the Tulsa Race Massacre. This book was written by Carol Boston Weatherford, and it was illustrated by the late Floyd Cooper. Well, if you have a copy, you know you can read along with me. But if you don't, it's quite okay. What I want you to do is make sure you're in a very comfortable place and you're relaxed and listen to Unspeakable, the Tulsa Race Massacre. Once upon a time, near Tulsa, Oklahoma, prospectors struck it rich in the oil fields. The wealth created jobs raised buildings, and attracted newcomers from far and wide, seeking fortune and a fresh start. Once upon a time in Tulsa, there was a community called Greenwood. Its residents descended from black Indians, from formerly enslaved people, and from exodusters who moved west in the late 1800s, fleeing the violence and racism of the segregated South. Once upon a time in Greenwood, there were some 10,000 people living in a 35 square block area. Train tracks divided the black and white communities. Segregation laws called for separate neighborhoods, schools, phone booths, and railroad and street coaches. Unfair tests made it hard for blacks to register to vote, and laws barred marriages across racial lines. So many black businesses cropped up along a one-mile stretch of Greenwood Avenue that educator and business leader Booker T. Washington called the area the Negro Wall Street of America. The name later became Black Wall Street, and the community kept thriving. Once upon a time on Black Wall Street, there were dozens of restaurants and grocery stores There were furriers, a pool hall, a bus system, and an auto shop, nearly 200 businesses in all. There were also several libraries, a hospital, a post office, and a separate school system where some say black children got a better education than whites. There were two black-owned newspapers, the Tulsa Star and the Oklahoma Sun, and over 20 churches and 15 black doctors, including Dr. A.C. Jackson, the most able black surgeon in the nation. On Detroit Avenue stood grand homes of doctors, lawyers, and prominent businessmen. Once upon a time in Greenwood, there were barbershops and beauty salons. Miss Mabel's Little Rose Beauty Salon boomed on Thursdays when maids who worked for white families got quaffed on their day off and strutted in style up and down Greenwood Avenue. The soda fountain at Williams Confectionery was the backdrop for scores of marriage proposals. And there was a luxurious Stratford Hotel, then the largest black-owned hotel in the nation. Black guests were welcome there, even as they were barred from Tulsa's White Hotels. Once upon a time in Greenwood, there were two movie theaters, including the 800-seat Black-owned Dreamland. There were even six privately owned airplanes. Back in 1921, not everyone in Tulsa was pleased with these signs of black wealth, undeniable proof that African Americans could achieve just as much, if not more, than whites. All it took was one elevator ride, one 17-year-old white elevator operator accusing a 19-year-old black shoeshines man of assault for simmering hatred to boil over. With the accused man in jail, the white-owned Tulsa Tribune newspaper ran a headline prompting readers to nab him, fearing the man would be lynched killed by a mob before his trial, 30 named black men rushed downtown to his rescue. At the jail, they faced off with 2,000 armed whites, 
On May 31, 1921, one day after Memorial Day, a holiday honoring fallen soldiers, skirmishes between the two groups left two black men and ten white men dead. But the worst was yet to come. Unable to get to the jail suspect, the white mob sparked rumors that the black community planned to attack. Unchecked and, in some cases, deputized by the police, the white mob stormed into Greenwood, looting and burning homes and businesses that blacks had saved and sacrificed to build. Threatening to shoot, the mob blocked firefighters from putting out the blazes. African-American World War I veterans took up arms to defend their families and property, but they were outnumbered and outgunned. Families fled with only what they could carry. Once upon a time in Greenwood, up to 300 black people, including Dr. Jackson, were killed. Hundreds more were injured. More than 8,000 people were left homeless, and hundreds of businesses and other establishments were reduced to ash. The police did nothing to protect the black community. When the National Guard arrived the next day, all that was left to do was put out the fires and move thousands of black residents into camps outside of Tulsa. As their community lay in ruins, black residents had to carry passes to enter the city. In the days and weeks that followed, some black Tulsans left and never returned. Others stayed and rebuilt the Greenwood community, only to witness its decline in the 1960s. For decades, survivors did not speak of the terror. Seventy-five years passed before lawmakers launched an investigation to uncover the painful truth about the worst racial attack in United States history. Police and city officials had plotted out with had plotted with the white mob to destroy the nation's wealthiest black community. Today, Tulsa's Reconciliation Park remembers victims in the 1921 massacre and recalls the role of African Americans in Oklahoma history. But the park is not just a bronze monument to the past. It is a place to realize the responsibility we all have to reject hatred and violence and to instead choose hope. The end, boys and girls. That was again unspeakable, the Tulsa Race Massacre. This book was written by Carol Boston Weatherford and it was illustrated by Floyd Cooper. Boys and girls, have a beautiful day.